Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to HITC Football. As of lately, I've been enjoying these World Cup 11. If you want to see my latest video, click up here, but I think that this video is also worth watching. Because in this video, we're going to be looking at the oldest stars at the World Cup. So that doesn't mean that I'm just going to pick the oldest players, because who wants to see that? Maybe Ecuador or Senegal will pick a 41-year-old third goalkeeper. Do we really want to talk about it? I don't think so. So I selected an 11 of old players, all over the age of 35. Some established players that you definitely recognize, some other players that you might have forgotten about that will still be playing at the tournament the world cup this year and i'm recording this when the squads haven't been fully confirmed yet so if i make a mistake i will apologize in advance bear with me on this one but believe me there are some fun players some interesting players in this 11 so let's get right into the video we're starting off with the goalkeeper and this goalkeeper comes from japan because ei kawishima i'm sorry again if i pronounce that completely wrong is 39 years old plays for league inside strasbourg and already won 95 caps for japan it's pretty impressive that at the age of 39 he's still playing in the top tier in France and this World Cup will be his fourth. In his last three attempts his nation Japan didn't make it out of the group. We will be hoping that this time around they will actually get out of the group but I'm afraid that I have to disappoint him because Spain, Germany and Costa Rica in the same group. I really don't see them going out of the group. I'm sorry I just don't see it. In a normal world it would be Spain and Germany ahead of them and arguably Costa Rica as well but yeah, I don't know. So let's just move on to the defense. And in defense, we have some absolute legends. For example, let's start off with Dani Alves. The right back is still going strong at the age of 39, playing for Liga MX side Pumas. After last campaign, joining Barcelona again for half a season, taking the number eight shirt and absolutely doing a great job for the club. It was obviously a second stint. In his first stint, he literally won everything under the sun. The Champions League, La Liga, the Copa del Rey, the Super Cup, the Club World Cup. I'm probably forgetting some accolades. This guy is one of the most decorated players in the entire game. And his longevity is absolutely ridiculous at the age of 39 it just got confirmed that he is in the squad for brazil going to the world cup i don't know if he will play every single game but his experience already makes him a great character in the dressing room because he basically experienced it all in 125 caps for the brazilian national team and brazil taking a 39 year old to the world cup is not an exception because he's not the only player of his age that is actually making the squad because tiago silva from chelsea is also going to the world cup another brazil legend with insane longevity Silva still plays regularly for Chelsea and his country. And why wouldn't he? Because every time he plays, he is insane. Over the last couple of weeks, he showed great form for Chelsea. According to his court, he's ranked in the best 20 players in the world right now. And Thiago Silva's already featured in three World Cups, with one of them being the 2014 World Cup in his own country, Brazil. The tournament went pretty decent for Brazil until they managed to get to the semi-finals and then subsequently lost 7-1 to Germany. You might ask if Thiago Silva is really that good of a defender if he conceded seven goals in a semi-final against Germany. Germany, but Thiago Silva was famously suspended that game so he didn't even play and even if he would have played conceding seven goals in one game doesn't make you a bad defender instantly pretty embarrassing showing for Brazil so they're probably hoping that that won't happen this time around and I don't think it will because they have a great team and I wouldn't be surprised if Thiago Silva will actually be a starting player for Brazil at the World Cup well we have a little bit of a problem here because now I was going to talk about Sergio Ramos but this video was recorded before the squads were confirmed and as we all know Sergio Ramos is not in the squad for Spain at the World Cup. So we're going to skip past this one and we're going to move on to the next player. The next player and the last player of the defense is Jan Vertonghen, a player that was once part of the golden generation for Belgium. But I'm afraid that this generation will go down as probably one of the best that the country ever had. They didn't manage to capitalize on that success and they didn't win a single international trophy. Because this tournament, yes, they're playing, but their team is not as good anymore. The 2018 World Cup was their last shot at silverware. At the 2018 World Cup, they finished in third place, beating England in the playoff game. But right now, Vertonghen is 35 will be playing his last tournament he can play at both center back and left back in this team we put him in left back the former Ajax and Tottenham player just doesn't feel right saying those two clubs in one center was playing for Benfica last season but this season he plays for Anderlecht where his team actually isn't doing that great they're in 11th right now so maybe the World Cup is coming at the right moment so that he can put his mind to other things and maybe try and help his nation come far in the tournament this year the next player is from Mexico and Andres Cordado will be playing his last tournament because he already announced that he will retire after the tournament having represented his nation almost 180 times. His captain of the Mexico squad is currently playing for Real Betis. Honestly, if you haven't watched Real Betis this season, I will highly advise you to do so. They're arguably one of the most entertaining teams to watch in Spain. Cordado isn't really a starter anymore for Betis. He played around 26% of the available minutes this season. They're in a group together with Argentina, Poland and Saudi Arabia. And I think that their chances of getting to the knockout rounds are actually pretty high. Argentina probably are gonna come first, but Mexico I think have a good shot of getting second. And when Cordado calls quits after the tournament, 
he can look back at a great career. And things are looking good for Real Betis, so maybe he will be able to bow out having achieved Champions League football with Betis. Next up is the 37-year-old Luka Modric, a player that seems to get better and better every single year, even though he's aging. Modric already was a star at the last World Cup in 2018, guiding his nation all the way to the final, where they ended up losing to France. But Modric was named the best player of the tournament there. He's insanely important for Croatia, their best player without a shadow of a doubt. He's also a key player in Real Madrid's Champions League and La Liga title challenge. Weirdly enough, they aren't top of the table anymore because Barcelona is in first now, but they did make it out of their Champions League and Real Madrid, you can never write them off. And strangely enough, the same goes for Croatia. In 2018, nobody expected them to go to the final, so why wouldn't they be able to do it this year? With a player like Luka Modric in your team, everything is possible. And who would have thought that after signing in 2012, getting named the biggest La Liga flop ever, that more than 10 years later, Luka Modric would be this much of an important player at Real Madrid. The last midfielder is Brian Ruiz, a player that I already know for a long time. Because when I started watching football, this guy was playing for Ajax's biggest rivals at the time. Because at the time, maybe you guys remember, FC Twente was really good in the Netherlands. And also in the Champions League, I remember, they came pretty far. And this guy was one of their star players. His form at FC Twente earned him a move to Fulham. When at Fulham, he got loaned out to PSV. He also played for Sporting for a little while. And after an adventure in Brazil with Santos, he's currently playing for LD Alajualense, which is a team in Costa Rica, but I'm pretty sure that most of you guys remember him for his time at Fulham. At the age of 37, this will most likely be his last World Cup too. He isn't the starter for Costa Rica anymore, he's a bit part player now. And if he even gets to play in the tournament, it will be a maximum of only three games. Because in a group with Germany, Spain and Japan, I see the chance of Costa Rica actually qualifying for the knockout rounds very low. It's time to move on to the attack. You guys know he's going to be in this 11, so we might as well start off with Cristiano Ronaldo. The 37-year-old is having his most difficult season to date, so far scoring only once in 10 Premier League games for Manchester United where he's not even a starter anymore. Ronaldo already won a major accolade in 2016 winning the Euros with his country when also nobody expected them to win the tournament. But this year Portugal are considered a dark horse, they have some great players but if they want to get anywhere close to that final they will need Ronaldo and they will need Ronaldo in good form. And personally I think that the World Cup comes at a perfect time for Ronaldo. Things have been tough at Manchester United so far so some time away at the club could be a good thing for both Ronaldo and Manchester United and the whole atmosphere of a World Cup the highest state might do something with Ronaldo and maybe he will find his finishing touch again and I personally think that he will do just that. He's also the all-time international top scorer of the entire world. He scored over 800 goals in his career. It just sounds mad to say that number out loud and I'm convinced that that ability doesn't just go away at one point. And like I said the whole atmosphere of the World Cup I think it will bring back something in Ronaldo. So don't be surprised if Ronaldo scores like five or six goals guiding Portugal to the semi-finals or even the final. Where Ronaldo is a true Real Madrid legend this guy is a Barcelona legend. Because Luis Suarez will also be competing at the tournament. You can never really fully write off Uruguay. In 2010, while still playing for Ajax, Suarez guided his team all the way to the semi-finals when they ended up losing to the Netherlands. But Suarez is never far away from controversy. We all remember his handball at the World Cup in 2010 against Ghana. We know numerous of his biting incidents. But over the last couple of years, Suarez seemed to have calmed down a little bit. Last season was a tough one for him at Atletico Madrid where he didn't play all the time. But at the age of 35, he has really discovered his form for Boyd Club National in Uruguay, where he won the league title with his club, and going far in this tournament might be one of the best ways to bow out of his international career. The last player in the attack is Olivier Giroud. The French striker is just a weird player if you ask me. In 2018 he went all the way to the final with France, winning the title as well, while failing to score a single goal for his country as a striker. But apparently this guy seems to have something over DJ Deschamps, because he always gets selected, he always plays, but okay we should put some respect on his name because soon enough this guy will become France's all-time top scorer. This season he already scored nine goals for AC Milan scoring absolute worldies for the club and he will get selected that is for sure but will he actually play at this tournament? He will be battling the likes of Nkunku, Karim Benzema and Kylian Mbappé for a position in the attack and I don't know if he's good enough for that. And to be fair he has been in great form for AC Milan these last couple of weeks so maybe he can make right what he didn't do in 2018 and grab a goal here and there. So guys let me know in the comments down below which one of these players do you think will have the best tournament. As always, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, click my videos on the end screen right now, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace!